Welcome back to Black Bear Forge as we continue our countdown to Christmas with simple blacksmithing projects. Today I thought I'd like to revisit one that we have done in the past. We made a similar cord or hose hook to store your coiled up air hoses or garden hoses, electrical cords, ropes, whatever it is you've got that doesn't want to hang on a sharp hook. So we made something similar to this earlier out of a single piece. Today I thought we'd explore doing this out of two pieces so that the main hook is one piece and this curved section that supports the hose or the cord is out of a second piece. For this project, the, the curved piece is a piece of eighth inch material, four inches by six inches, and I've already drilled two holes in it and countersunk the holes on one side. And we'll show you exactly what all that's for as we get to it. The other piece is a piece of quarter inch by one inch flat bar, 14 inches long. And this is a case where I'm trying to keep my measurements and my dimensions the same because I need to make several of these hooks for a special purpose. For my first step, I just want to put a little bevel around the top edge of this flat plate that'll get curved. And the top edge is where the two countersinks are. And those two countersinks will eventually get flush rivets that hold this to the other bar. Next thing we'll do is we'll bend this. And for this, I've stood my swedge block up on edge. So I've got the biggest depression that it offers. And the two countersinks go up so that they will be on the top side when we're all done. Just give that a nice curve. Make sure it's relatively even. The cords and the hoses won't care, but it looks better. So just something like that. That's really all we have to do to this. That it doesn't hurt to wire brush it. The next thing we'll work on is the bar that actually makes the hook, and I want to start with a taper on this end. Now I want to draw this out to a point similar to my sample here, and this sample is just to remind me of what I'm doing as I do multiples of these. So this one won't actually get used in the making of a hook until I'm all done and sure I don't need the sample anymore. So I'm going to start this at the horn of the anvil. I'm going to draw out just the end to start with so I get that point right off. And I want to leave it quarter inch thick. And the reason you go to the horn is it just moves metal faster than working on the face. So that establishes my initial point. Then we'll keep working back till we get it to what we want it to look like. Like so many things, this is not super critical. Even though I want all these to be similar, they don't have to match exactly. This is just a guideline. But now that we have our general shape drawn out, and that looks pretty good, We'll finish it at the anvil. That'll give us just a little more length. Or I should say we'll finish it at the face of the anvil and that will give us a little bit more length. So pretty much we're just smoothing up the taper, making sure the thickness is good. Then we want to split this. I may have gotten the point a little bit too pointy. That'll make it a little di more difficult to split, but not impossible. I 
We want to split this right down the center, the entire length of the taper. So we'll just start at the end here. Because that point is so pointy, I'm going to actually start back just a little bit and work my way up to it. I went ahead and finished hot rasping this off camera. You don't really need to watch or listen to every single screechy file stroke. Although I know some of you would just as soon do that, but not everybody. So now I just want to clean these up and even up any lumps and bumps. And then we have to decide what do we want this finial to look like. And a finial is just an ornamental portion at the end of the bar that really serves no other purpose other than to be ornamentation. So this split motif can be made into hearts, can made it, the split motif can be made into flame patterns, heart patterns, ram's horde patterns. Use your imagination. And of course, you don't have to make the hook with a split fideal if you don't want to. Today I feel like doing a little bit of a scroll sort of a thing where both of these are going to scroll the same direction. One will be up high and one will be down low. This really shows if you have thick and thin spots in these. So keep an eye on how it's rolling up. We'll get that hot again. I'm going to push this off center so I can get into the inside a little bit more. As this scrolls up, I kind of change my opinion a little bit about how tight a scroll I want. I think I want it tighter than I started. And you can do some of this with scrolling pliers if you have them. I think I would like to bring that in just a little bit. Like I say, these scrolling pliers are just wonderful for this. It's a good skill developer to do as much of it as you can at the anvil before you resort to something like this, just because you, just because you can develop better skills that way. Look for little kinks or flat spots and try and keep everything as round as you can. So now we'll do the other one and I'm going to start by offsetting it a little bit to the, the left, my left, and then we'll scroll it the same direction and higher. So now I can start rolling this up. I 
And really, that's pretty much what I'm going for right there. It's just sort of, sort of whatever you feel like. So I've just lightly chamfered the edges here to give it a nicer look. But now it is time to punch some holes in it. Put one up fairly high. And you can certainly drill these holes. The advantage to punching them is one, we can do it while we're here at the anvil and it's just done. But the other advantage is that it swells just a little bit and you can tell it's been punched. That's just a little bit fatter. It's an obvious sign that it was punched. And personally I just think that looks a little bit better. Shows you cared to take the time to do it. Although really, for punching two holes, I think it's as fast or faster than putting a drill bit in the drill press. And if you're drilling with a hand drill, I think it's a lot faster. So that's this end pretty much done. I think I'm going to step over to the treadle hammer and put my touch mark right in between the punch marks there. So now it's time to work on this other end. And and again, lots of options you can do here. The one I showed earlier had a little upset end. The one we did previously had a fishtail scroll end. This one I think I'll draw out into a tapered scroll and scroll it up a little bit. Not a very big scroll, just enough to, to have a little curl over the end. I'm going to start by tapering it in the width so that as I taper it the other way, it widens back out again. I just want to even this up as much as I can. Scroll looks much better if the end is symmetrical. It's okay to be curved, but not lopsided. And I'm going to chamfer the edges. Because this end is seen from both the front and the back, depending on how you look at the hook. I'm tampering both front and back. Okay, now let's roll the little scroll bit up there. We want to roll that towards the back of the hook to make it come out in the front. It's just a simple little scroll. It's really all we need right there. Now we need to decide where we want to put our, our bend here. And I think we're going to go right here and I'm just going to mark the, the ends. Center the holes up along the center line of the, the piece and mark your holes.
And I'm going to put two center punch marks on the line so I can find them to make my bends and center punch my holes. And these holes I'm going to go ahead and drill. And the only reason I'm going to drill them is just to help guarantee accuracy. It's too easy to get a punch a little bit off on the center punch mark and they do have to line up with these in the long run. So with these holes drilled, we'll heat it up, we'll line the two punch marks up in the vise, and then bend this over, being careful not to damage our little scroll end. We could have done the scroll end afterwards, but I think it was easier to do it first. So we want to put this in the vise with our two center punch marks right at the edge. And we want to start to bend. And I'm going to use a set hammer. I'm going to use a set hammer then to get in close. So now we need to put the other bend in. We'll do the same thing with the other two. And if you put this in level with the vise jaws, it helps guarantee that your bend is going to be at 90 degrees and not twisted. And we'll clean this up at the anvil. This is really a nice thing to do with a torch and just get a real controlled heat. But I'm trying to keep tooling to a minimum here if we can. So this is something fairly easily done over the heel of the anvil where you've got some square spots to work on. Drop it in the hardy hole to work on the back there a little bit. Just whatever it takes. A square horn on a two horn anvil would be really handy for this as you could span the whole thing if you needed to. That's pretty much all you need to do. Next thing we'll do, we'll let this cool and we'll rivet this piece on. Next step is to attach the two pieces together. Now odds are your holes aren't perfectly centered from both sides, so you may have to try this on both ways. You could drill these holes afterwards, but I think that's a lot harder to get the, the drill in, especially if you're using a drill press. And I'm putting one in backwards temporarily just so it stays put, but I want the round head on the bottom of the piece and then I want the countersunk flat head on the top. And that's just so this rivet doesn't fall out, it helps hold everything in place. And don't drive these rivets to the point that you take the bow out of this. There's going to be a little gap under there and that's okay. That rivet could be a little tighter. So I'm going to get in there with a ball peen hammer and get it all the way down flush. If possible, you want to fill your countersink. So now that I've done that, I need to get this rivet back out. These rivets don't do much. They aren't big structural rivets. They're just keeping this plate from falling off. So don't stress out over it too much. Again, make sure these are flush. You don't want sharp edges. And then also check and make sure this isn't sharp. So if you have sharp edges, it might abrade your cords or your hoses. That's pretty much the finished hook. Let's go ahead and put some wax on it, because we can. 
I'm just going to give this one last good wire brushing and check it for any twists or bows or anything that's not right. And then we'll put some wax on it and call it done. Well, here we have another nice Christmas gift idea or something really handy for you to make for yourself to use around the shop. I think I could probably use a half dozen of these, so even though I need to get a bunch of these made and sent out to people, I'll probably make a few extras and save for myself. Now, who are the lucky people that are going to get these? As I've mentioned before, I owe my Patreon patrons some thank you gifts for donating, and some of them get a mystery gift. And this is going to be that mystery gift. I promised I would show what that was going to be in a video so they could see them being made. Each one will be different. I will interpret this top scroll a little bit different. Maybe some of them won't even get split and scrolled. Some of them might get different finials. So they'll all be one of a kind, unique hooks. And these will go to the 20 or so people who donated at that level. Now the hook that I made as a sample earlier today, so I could show you what we were making before we got to the hook that we made for the video, is actually going to go with me to the Rocky Mountain Smiths annual holiday get-together. At this get-together, we share a meal and we socialize. There's no actual blacksmithing taking place. This is a place you get to stay clean. But we have a gift exchange, and everybody brings a wrapped, hand-forged gift, and we exchange gifts without knowing who brought each gift. So it's completely random. You have no idea whose item you're going to get this year. So somebody will go home with this and I will then come home with some other hand-forged gift, and I'll share that with you when I know what that is. And for me, that get-together is tomorrow, but for you, it was yesterday. I hope that's not too confusing. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up. I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. I hope you're finding time in your day to get out to your shop to make some of these projects to give as gifts for the upcoming holiday season. Or if you're watching these videos later in the year, just to have some good ideas for projects you can do in the shop. Stick around, watch a few of the other videos. Come back tomorrow, we'll have another project in our countdown to Christmas. But remember to stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you later.